So as you probably already know, there's no masking function within Serial to be able to isolate certain parts of our image so we can just work on that area without affecting the rest of the data. But there is a way to create kind of a pseudo mask where you can extract some channel information from the image and rework it in pixel math. It's a little bit of a process, but it's not too difficult. This is real basic. I'd love to see what you guys come up with if this sparks any interest with anybody. Let me know in the comments what you've come up with and different techniques. So that's what this video is about. I'm going to show you how you can create a mask in Cyril. My name is Rich and you're watching Deep Space Astro. Okay, so here's what we're working with. This is my Flame and Horsehead Nebula. This image has already been pre-processed, it's been stretched, and the stars have been removed. What I want to do at this point is I'd like to be able to brighten up the area around the horse head, but I don't want to affect the Flame Nebula. If we do it using one of our stretching tools, so if I open up GHS over here and just set my symmetry point in that area and start stretching, I can bring up the horse head area, but I'm also bringing up the flame, right? And as I'm bringing up the horse head to where I like it, in my opinion, I just blew out the brightness and the flame so that's not going to work for me so that's what this is like i said in the intro this is a, a pseudo mask there's no mask function within serial but with a, a little bit of work it's not too bad you can actually mask out part of your image to be able to do some work just on a certain area without affecting the rest of the data in the image so to start what we're going to do is extract our luminance in our red green and blue channels so we're going to come up to image processing extraction and split channels we're going to start with our RGB color space, and we're just going to call each of them RGMD, red, green, and blue. Click apply. If we jump real quick into our working directory, you can see I have my R, G, and B channels saved out as individual fit files. And if we come over to the console tab, you can see where it's saying that it wrote those files out for us. So now we need to go after the luminance. So we're going to change our color space over to the lab and I'm going to tell it to call luminance L and A and B we don't need. So I'm just going to delete those. This is kind of odd how it works. I kind of expected if I didn't provide a name that it would do one of two things. It would either yell at me and tell me I needed to give it a name or it would just ignore it. What it does is actually creates a file without a file name. So I'm going to end up with a .fit file for the A and then it's going to do the same thing for B, but if it's actually just going to be overwriting the A. So I'll show you what I'm talking about here, but we're just after L. So L, leave these two blank and hit apply and then close. If you look in the console, you can see right here, it saved our luminance.fit, but then it also saved a nameless file.fit and then did the same thing again. So if we come over into the process directory, there's our luminance, and then there's that weird .fit file. We don't need it just to keep things clean and not to cause any confusion, I just delete that file. So now we're left with L, R, G, and B. So now we're gonna start with working on masking out this area of the horse head. We're gonna come over to open and we're going to open our luminance file. Now, a mask, if you're familiar with masking in any program, whether it's Pixinsight, GIMP, Photoshop, what have you, black will protect and white allows you to work on that area. So we're gonna come up in the image processing and we're gonna go into our histogram transformation. And based on what I just said, black protects, we're gonna crank these sliders around. We're gonna get everything black that we want the mask to protect. So I'm gonna start with my darks and I'm gonna slide it over and just get everything nice and black that I'm, I want protected. And it needs to be pure black. If it's not pure black, then it's not gonna fully protect the image. So come over to our, our light side, just to try to brighten up the area that I wanna work with. You can play with your midtones. You know, every set of data is going to be different. I just want the area around the horse head. So we're going to crank this down just to get it, like I said, in the area that I want. All right. And I think that looks good. So I'm going to hit apply. Now we need to take care of everything else that we want the mask to protect, right? The, uh, the flame nebula, the star halos, other artifacts that may still be showing through. Easy enough to do. Just use your selection tool, draw a box around it. Come down to your command line and type fill and then zero. Hit enter. And it takes it away. Watch when you do this the first time. The comment that I made about make sure your black is really black. If it's not, you'll notice it when you draw a selection around here because what's in this selection is pure black. When you click outside of the box, if you see where you drew your box and it was black, that means your background is not dark enough so you're going to have to go back into the histogram transformation 
and make sure you get it darker. So just keep that in mind. We'll just go around and get rid of the rest of these artifacts. Instead of typing fill space zero, you can just hit the up arrow on your keyboard and it'll bring the last command up in the command line for you. Hit enter and just rinse and repeat for any part of the image that you want to protect. I'll grab this stuff down here. Now I need, I want to get rid of the flame and I want to get rid of this star halo. This can be tricky. And this is why I didn't brighten this image enough to see all of the hydrogen alpha that was in the original image. Because as you draw, and I'm just going to do this haphazardly here. And if I was to fill right there, you have these hard lines and you'll end up seeing that in your final image. So you want to be able to create this mask in a way where you see this edge is very, very minimal, if not at all. So that's why I, I stretched it the way that I did, because I knew that I could take my box and kind of squeeze it in right about in this area and then do my fill. And even though, yeah, you can see the line, we're not going to see too much of that. And you can, I can actually zoom in here a little bit and maybe just clean up this corner since I see a dark area here to kind of hide so it's just you know play around with it try and get it as clean as you can we got some stuff straying out over here all right so let's go back out to a fit view and the next thing we want to do is apply a blur to this so before we do that the blur is another command line function that cannot be undone so if i blur this and i decide that it's too much i can't undo it and start over again so because of that we're just going to come up and we're going to save this image so we have a, a reset point basically and i'm just going to call it mask underscore l and you can name it whatever you want it's just a way like i said to have a reset point to go back to so we'll save that as a 32-bit fit now we'll come down to the command line to apply the blur and we use the gaussian command for that so it's g-a-u-s-s -S, space and then your sigma value um, just to show you how that save file is going to help us if i was to go really crazy and say go 20 and that was way too much of a blur that i was looking for if i was to undo it's not going to undo the gaussian blur that i just applied it's going to undo all the work that i did previous so that's where that save file comes in and helps you so now i can go back and open up my mask underscore l and i'm back to square one before i applied the gaussian blur so I would start with a, a lower number. I'm going to do five. I know that works pretty well for here. So you can see it blurred everything out, which also helps soften that straight line for my selection tool over here. Once you're happy with your blur, then we're going to do another save. But this time we're just going to call it mask. 32-bit fit file. Click save. And now we're going to jump into pixel math. So image processing pixel math and we need to add a bunch of files in here that we've extracted and created so we're going to come over we're going to hit the plus button we're going to select our mask file we're going to select red green and blue click open uncheck to use a single expression and name your variables so they match your file name so this one says mask i don't want it called starless r that makes no sense so i'm going to rename that to mask my red file i'm going to call that r my green, I'm going to call G. My blue, I'm going to call B. Starting with your red channel expression, click in the field, double click on the red path, and it'll automatically put the variable in, in the expression box for you. So now we have red multiplied by our mask file, multiplied by the value of K. And the value of K is going to be specified down here in our parameters. So we're going to start and tell it K equals 1.5. And then we're going to do a similar thing for green. We're going to double click on the green path. We're going to multiply it by our mask, and multiply it by the value of K. Same thing with blue. Put it on our blue, multiplied by the mask, multiplied by K. Slide this over so we can see our image. With all this in place, you're just going to click the apply button. So you can see the brightness. It's hard to compare because we don't have multiple windows, obviously, in Cyril, but just playing around with your K parameter, you can you can change the look at this. You can make it brighter or dimmer. So we're at 1.5. Let's go to say like 0.5 and then hit apply. We can go up higher. You know, let's go five and see how crazy that gets. So it's too bright, but you can see how it's affecting it, right? I don't like, you know, the whites that's starting to come in here. That's too much brightness. So maybe 1.3, go back up to five. It's just just the taste right there three i think that looks okay all right so once you get it looking the way that you want by playing with your k value hit close and then we're going to save this image 
and I like to call it PM for pixel math underscore image. Again, name it whatever you want, doesn't that matter? 32 bit fit again. Now back into pixel math, so image processing, pixel math. You want to delete the four files that we added previously Hit by hitting the minus button up top. We're going to tick use single expression. We're going to change our K value this time at a starting point of about 0.5. Then we're going to add our PM image, our pixel math image that we just created previously as well as the original image that we started this whole process with. So the image we extracted the LRGMB channels from, which is my Starbucks result file here. Click open, two files are there. Change the variable name to something that makes sense. So I'm just gonna call my PM image PM. Starless, I'm fine with that because that is in fact a Starless image. We're gonna clear our expression out of the RGB and K. And the expression to combine these two together is going to be our starless image, our original image that we started with, plus the value of K, which we have specified down here right now, multiplied by the pixel math image that we created, and then hit apply. Now the whole image comes in, everything is protected except for the horse head, and we can again start playing with this value. So we're at 0.5 now. If I go up to, let's just go up to something that you guys can really see. So we'll say 5. And watch when I hit apply, we should see that it just affects the horse head area, but it won't touch anything that was black. So the flame won't be affected. These star halos won't be affected. So I'll click apply and you can see the flame has not been modified at all. We totally blew out the horse head, but that was expected because I put five in there just to show you guys. So start backing it down. Um, we'll try to see what that looks like. That's still a little bit too bright. Maybe one. And maybe just a little bit less than that. Let's try 0 0.8. I'm looking at this white area here. That's a little bit too bright. So, yep, I think that looks good. So I was able to brighten up the horse head area without affecting the flame or any other data that's in the image. Uh, this is still a pixel math result. So you need to save this file when you're done. So once again, we'll come up to save. And I just call this my starless underscore mask. Again, so I don't get it confused with the original file. Click save and save. So again, it's hard within serial to compare changes between two images because we don't have any kind of multi-window functionality. But um, what we can do is, is I can come up to my arrow button here and I can open up my original starless file. So this is the one we started with and you can see how dull the horse head is. And then come back again to the recent files list and select my starless. So I can flip back and forth and see the difference between the two and it's actually probably a little bit too bright but you guys get the point so like i said in the beginning not a true mask not a built-in function in serial but with a little bit of magic you can get it working just like a mask so again let me know what you guys come up with this was kind of fun working with this one before you go i want to thank everybody who's joined my memberships here on youtube and on buymeacoffee.com i appreciate each and every one of you thanks to everybody that's made donations again here on youtube and on buymeacoffee.com all appreciated if you once again thanks everybody for watching and we'll see you in the next video clear skies